Siegelman came around wanting to be on this board. He was tired of it. it you know, it, it took too much of his time and interest. He it lost interest in it. It wasn't a big thing. Did nothing to help him in his business anymore. And he just considered it kind of a public service uh, and thought, well, you know, if, if, if Siegelman wants me to do it, I'll do it. But, you know, there was nothing that he did while he was on the board uh, under Siegelman that benefited himself personally or benefited Health South in any way. And uh, so for some people to say that he, it was something he was seeking in the way of bribery is just outrageous. There just ain't no truth to it. And, and, and they should have known it. The U.S. attorneys and everybody associated with the case, the judge should have known it. Well, well you, the case should have been thrown out. Now, earlier you said you mentioned quid pro quo. Right. And in this particular situation, from what I gather yeah. you were discussing, there was yeah. no quid pro quo. No, that was no asked. quid pro quo. And for the listening audience out there to understand, that's kind of a Latin legal term, which not everybody understands. Some do. But quid pro quo means basically, you know, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, so to speak. You know, it's one thing for an exchange for another. But it's got to be something of value. It can't be, uh, you know, uh, I asked you uh, for some bubble gum and, and you give it to me, you know. I mean, that, bubble gum ain't anything of, of great value, you know. But... Uh, it was just not anything of, of, of real value, first of all, for Scrooge to even be on the con board. He didn't want to be on it. And, and, and secondly, uh, even if he had been uh, um, on it, I mean, there was nothing that he did or the con board did to help him or Hell South while he was on the board. Well, I, and, if, and that very little it could have done because it did not regulate the Hell South. And, and, I, and I would think that this might have an impact on other individuals who, let's say, may make a contribution and then later request it to, to join a, a, a board for the state. The governor wants to appoint them to a well, particular board or committee. Or You know, you might have indicted 10,000 people in this state for, for what Richard Scrooge did. I mean, people make contributions to <clears throat> successful candidates all the time who in turn, I mean, governors appoint people to judgeships. They appoint them to boards, <clears throat> all kinds of boards. You know, there must be, what, 10,000 boards in this state. You know, What message is this? this conviction send and what message well, does this prosecution send to, well, it to those sends individuals? A, it sends a very bad message. I imagine First a very of all, chilling message. Yeah, that even holding public office can be an invitation to indictment, especially if you happen to be a Democratic politician and you've got a ruthless Republican prosecutor. You know? uh, and especially if you've got a, a fellow in the White House who doesn't know anything about the law, uh, never has known anything, and then you've got somebody like, uh, um, you know, uh, well, Carl... Um, What's his name? Um, uh, uh, Rove. Rove, yeah, yes. Carl Rove, yeah, who uh, is nothing but political through and through, you know, and uh, he has in, been a very negative influence on, used to, helped use the Justice Department to punish enemies and, 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 and reward friends. And, I mean, the very thing that they're, you know, indicting and, and, and chasing Scrooge and Siegel and for is a thing they themselves do all the time. I mean, you know, that's why it's so bad that they... Uh, get money from campaign contributions directly to people's campaigns and then appoint people all over the country to, I mean, a lot of your, your, your federal judges have been people who have been substantial cont contributors to uh, the successful campaigns of, of people who were elected to office. Uh, and, you know, it's just, it's just the way the system works. It's been done that way for a long time. Now, uh, the, all, all Scrooge would have wanted, maybe with Siegelman, and, and that's legitimate, would be access. Uh, and I'm sure that Siegelman gave Scrooge ample access. But Siegelman gives that to, to a lot of other people. I mean, you know, frankly, the matter, knowing Don Siegelman like I do, I think he'd give access to a poor person on the street without a shirt on his uh, back as much as he might give it to somebody that with a lot of money because that was his heart. And, uh, and I think Richard Scrooge has the same heart. He would, uh, he's the most generous guy I've run into in a long time. He's done more for charities in this state than, than anybody that I know of since 1990. And I think that would, you know, it would be very difficult to dispute what I just said. And I think we covered this once before. But this con board uh, that, was, that the governor asked uh, Mr. Siegelman to, to, to be a member of, right. like you pointed out, it's something that he had already been a member of with under three previous governors, I think Republican he got and Democrat. Republican and Democrat. Bob James was Republican when he. In fact, you know, uh, Scrooge supported Bob James in his campaign against Siegelman. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, and uh, and then he uh, had been appointed by Jim Folsom Jr., who was a Democrat, and appointed by Governor Hunt, Guy Hunt, who was a Republican. So he'd been appointed by people on both sides. I mean, he wasn't a strictly partisan type of guy. He was in business, but. You know, but but after having done so well over so many years, he had developed a heart for charity and still has it. And, and I mean, when you get to be one of the top Fortune 500 companies in, in, in America, that's a, a big, big company. And uh, they created thousands of jobs around this state and in America. And, and uh, you know, he's been treated, I mean, 
the worst kind of way. I mean, it's a Horatio Alger story, too. He took a company built from ground zero uh, up to uh, where it, you know, was doing so much in this state and still is a, a good, strong company. Uh, that, that's a whole other subject we won't get into about how Health South treated him, I think, shabbily. But nonetheless, uh, he, uh, he was head of Health South at the time all this happened. And, you know, Health South benefited in no way and really didn't stand to benefit in any way through the, at least the regulation of its health care industry by the con board because the con board does not regulate health care okay. industry doesn't Let, regulate any health care company. Let's look at some of the other issues that came out in this particular case, at least some of the ones that I remember reading. Recently, there was an issue dealing with the judge, uh, dealing uh, the, 